Um, I'm gonna, I want to take a... <laughs> didactic, pedagogical approach to this notion of fearing God because we've been throwing this out irresponsibly and I need us to truly understand this. So I hope you got your shout a moment ago on your shield of faith because now I can need to engage you Matthew 25, verse 23. Now, just before um, she reads this, we told you, we've been dealing with some principles of reinvention. The first one we told you is that know that the blessing is on you. We didn't deal with that. And um, now we're talking about being faithful to your present assignment. Something new is on the horizon for all of us. I'm telling you, something new is on the horizon. Something, something new. I, I, I see your, <laughs> let me, this, I was talking to Marisha earlier today, and um, I was telling her what a preacher said to me about her. And he says, I'll say, it, I'll say it out loud. Now, we do know that Marisha has a business. People say she does sing to weddings. That shouldn't be life language no more. She has a business. Start using that kind of language, you know? Are you all saying that? Yeah. Um, whoever here has cooked, or she does cook. No. She has a business. We just, we just start using that language because you have whatsoever you say. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. So if you just cook at home, you can keep on cooking at home. But if you have a business, your business can expand. So, so, so you can't be talking, um, Rita, I, I just do a little thing at home. Why would you declare it over, your, over, over, over this conglomerate that God has given you? I just do a little thing at home. I just do a little thing on the side. Uh, you don't have no space for little things. What's on you is too great for little things. Glory to God. Anyway, so the person said to me, he said, boy, he said, listen, I listened to Marisha the other day. I'm reaching a shift right now that I ain't see her doing much more singing, you know. The call's coming to her now for her to preach. And this is somebody that I didn't even know her to preach. That's what he said about her. They said the call's coming now for, the, for her to preach. And I smiled and said, reinvention. Like the lanes that we had gotten comfortable in, write this down, comfort is a trick. Rest is guaranteed, but comfort is a trick. Yeah, watch, yeah, watch, watch comfort. Because right next to comfort is, is, is someone called Settle. So you yeah, watch out for comfort. All right. So, so we were sharing um, about this thing, you got to be faithful where you are before um, you can be released to this next reinvention. That's why nobody has room now to be slack where you are right now. You got to be tight. You got to have your game together. And it is with that, on this same notion, that we went to Matthew 25 and 23, talking about being faithful in your now. Parenthetically, let me put something here for you in this Matthew 25 and 23. Somebody needs to hear this about being faithful in your now. Being faithful. Um, don't over-spiritualize that being faithful. Being faithful, you know, we can put things in there like being on time. Like um, giving an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. Excelling at your job. Watch what the text says. Um, his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. What does it say right there? Thou? Come on, read it. Thou has been? Faithful over a few things. Uh-huh. I will make thee ruler. Crazy. He says, you have been faithful, now I'll make you ruler. The faithful there suggests that what you watch it over ain't yours. You don't rule it. You've been, you've been a subordinate, but even in your position of being subordinate, you've been faithful. And your faithfulness as a subordinate is what will cause you to advance as a ruler. Many of us never get to rule because we have never been faithful as a subordinate. Are y'all still here? 
That's not the teacher for the night. I just want to throw it in there to encourage somebody for when you go to work tomorrow. Uh, all right. So, the text begins, his Lord said unto him, and that's where I am in That's all I am. We talked about his Lord. His Lord is stewardship. We talked about stewardship week before last. Um, now I want to deal with said unto him. <sighs> so then see, we read these kind of things up and down in the Bible. God said, God said, God said, God said, God said, and we take it for granted. Sometimes we up here take it for granted, and those of us, those of us down this, in there take it for granted, and we get so careless that we, we would now say, God say, God say, God say. And the question is, did you really hear God? Do I really hear God? Do I really hear God? I heard something today says, when God guides your faith, you never miss. What does it mean God guides your faith? That means your faith is based on what God said. We, we have faith misses when our faith is based on what we want and not based on what God said. When your faith is directed towards what God has said, you never miss. Let me, let me go, let me go a little. Can I say this now? And I'll use, let me use Marisha again. This is a good example for you to use, and you'll see why. When it comes to her and youth ministry, she is bold as a lion with an assignment, a blaze, seek. Because she hears clearly in the direction of her assignment. Ask her about something else. See, when you're functioning at what God says, that faith always hits. Because that faith is tied into what you heard God say, and you know he said it. I've found that for stuff for Life Worship Center, I don't miss. Stuff for Denzel, dine on your business. Because I hear him clearly in the lane of my assignment. Now, I'm giving you all a back end. This must be way down the end of this teaching. I'm all over the place now. This must be at the end. Because this, what, this, what this tells us is um, practice hearing in your assignment. Practice hearing in what God has called you to do. I know, every time you're frustrated about, um, <laughs> let's give you one. Is, is this the one I should marry? Oh, I, when you ain't sure about that, leave that and go to your assignment to practice hearing. That, that there is so basic, that can help some of you all so much. Go in your God direction so you could learn the tune. What's that song? I said song. Is that come thou found? Come thou found of every blessing. Tune my heart. You see, walking in that anointing will tune your heart. Will adjust your spiritual ear to hear what God is saying. Is this too much yet? Yeah, everybody, all right? Okay, all right. So that that was just going. Let's let's start teaching. Let's start teaching. So. This notion of hearing, beloved, is existential. It is not optional. We have to know that we are hearing God. Now, let's say why. Why is hearing so critical? Uh, Romans 3 and 22. Jody, get a mic. Somebody's got a mic. Only Marisha 1. Um, Romans 3 and 22. Romans 1 and 17. I need these two verses. Who all got a mic? Only Marisha? Oh, you got one too, Jesse? All right, Jesse, do the Romans 3 and 22. Marisha, do Romans 1 and 17, because I want you to get in the King James. I want you to flip over to the NLT. All right, give me, why is hearing so critical? Give me that, um, please, Jesse. Romans 3 and 22. 
even the righteousness of God, uh -huh. which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. All right. So righteousness is by faith. Say that. Righteousness is by faith. That's very critical. Righteousness, because I'm, I'm building a case as to why, why hearing is so critical. Righteousness is by faith. You don't get righteous by living right because you can't. <laughs> you get righteous living by faith. You can. Your righteousness, your living right, the Bible says it's like filthy rights. So all this work that we you do and I just do, trying to live right, we always fall short. Do I have a witness like me? In our attempts to live right, we does fall short. Why only me want to lift my hand? Like, you're going to be a lion. You're going to be a, like, 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 either I lie or you're lying. That in our attempts to, to be righteous, to be spotless, Chandra, we does fail. Because our righteousness was not to be attained by our effort. It was to be attained by faith. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. That's how we get righteous. Are you still here? Okay, now go to Romans 1, 17. Marisha, what does it say? For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, uh -huh. the just shall live by faith. That's it right there. All right, so, so here it is. Um, we become righteous by faith. We become righteous by faith. What does the word just mean? Let me tell you, righteous. All right? So the word, the just shall live by faith, that's the righteous. He says that we become righteous by faith, and the righteous shall live by faith. Here we go. Your faith makes you righteous, and your faith maintains your righteousness. Do you see it in the scriptures? So we get, right, the, we get our righteousness by faith. But then he says, now that you are righteous, you got to keep on living by faith. Once you step, this is how we lose our place of righteousness when we step outside of faith. You mean when we sin? No, when we step outside of faith. When you step outside of faith, you lose your posture of righteousness. Let me just confirm this to you real quickly. Um, go to Hebrews chapter 3, the last verse. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. See, when you, when you be outside of faith, when you function outside of faith, you have restrictions. You have limited access. So faith is how we access everything. Someone say this, I live by faith. Say it again, say, I live by faith. Say it again, say, I live by faith. This is so critical. You are righteous, and righteous people live by faith. So you got your righteousness. You attained righteousness. You didn't achieve it. It was given to you because of faith, and you stay righteous when you live by faith. So read um, the... Uh, uh, Romans 1 and 17 in the NLT for me, please. What does it say? This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. Read this. This, this here is so good. Go this, ahead. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. Read that line again. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. From start to finish by faith. So you become righteous by faith and you finish by faith. You don't ever jump out of faith. It is accomplished from start to finish by faith. I, I know for sure that this is the lane that God has called us to be in because when you get living at this level, beloved, you ain't going to miss. You ain't going to know what stress is. You ain't going to know what defeat is. When we really start living by faith, let me parenthetically I guess y'all probably didn't still tired hearing this. But we're getting our property, but. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like, see, I got to teach this right because 
you know what? Madana Bahushka Baha. There have been a lot of leaders that have done things by faith, but the congregation never moved in the faith move. Oh, I almost called some names because I was working with some people who, did some, who saw some miracles by faith, but never taught it to the people. So I don't want us moving in a faith building, but still have a works people. We got to represent the building that we're going to be in. Because we're moving in a faith building. Because we can build it without the bank. And they're going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be breathtaking. There are going to be people who treat us like how Judas treat that gal with the alabaster box. They're going to walk in there and say, why all this waste? Good God, I'm, I'm excited already. I'm going to say it again. I promise you, they will walk into that building, walk on that property and say, why all this waste? Boy, they can show off, eh? The first time we saw a temple built, that's what happened. Sheba walking there, Sheba saying, what? Read your Bible, it's a good book. Queen of Sheba walks into Solomon's temple and says, boy, they lie. They say he was rich, but they ain't no. This, this next level right here. And, and we, we are, oh my God, it fits. We are not ashamed of the gospel. Good God. We are not ashamed of the good news. And being not ashamed of the good news means that you're comfortable living, walking, breathing in wealth. Am I in the right church? I need it. Do I need it? Bottle this up and did it somewhere else? Being not ashamed of the gospel. See, the good, gospel is good news. The good news is I could go to heaven but still enjoy earth. Some folks, their good news is the chariots are coming. They go for the chariots and they don't want to get left behind. The good news for us is until the chariots come, we in the shade. We live in the good life. Because he says, I am coming that you may have and have it. Glory to God to the full and running over. Y'all still here? All right. Um, we, we live by faith. We, get, we attain, obtain righteousness by faith. And we maintain righteousness by faith. We obtain by faith and we maintain by faith. All right. So then, how does we get faith? How does we get faith? This is, I don't want nobody sitting here with a spirit of familiarity. Please, I know you, oh, I know the scripture. I know he can, he in Romans 10 and 17. That's familiarity. I am going there. But don't get familiar because you need to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Romans 10 and 17. Go ahead, what does it say? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, this is dead basic. Dead basic. Here's how you get faith. You get faith by what? By what? This is critical. You get faith by hearing. You don't get faith by having heard. You get faith by hearing. There must be a constant, consistent engaging in hearing. You must be constantly hearing if you want to constantly stay in faith. And we just found out from Romans 117 that from start to finish is faith. So if from start to finish is faith, that means from start to finish you got to be hearing. And guess what? Earlier on in the same Romans 8, 10, sorry, he says, how can they hear without a preacher? But hold on, how can he preach unless he be sent? All right. So this isn't just a preacher, this is a sent preacher. And you don't send nobody randomly. If somebody is sent, they're sent on assignment. Oh, God, I just said something just now. So, so this, is, this is why it is so critical that you're attached to the right source for you. Sorry, no. 
the right resource for you. Glory to God, because he's the source. You need to be contented to the right resource that God has ordained for you because faith comes by hearing. Now, we want, to, we want to go further in this, but this is where it begins, especially as we do our walk with God. God will connect you with a voice, with a human voice, to assist you in learning how to hear. He will connect you to a human voice. You all know it because you all in this church, but I also make sure that we establish this so you can um, know when someone around you is talking foolishness. When you, so you could, you, could, you could pick out foolishness. I was, taught, I, was, I was told this, that the way you learn fake money is by studying real money. They say you can never learn fake money by studying fake money because it's too much fake money. So what you do, I, I write the Bible? Okay, so the, what they do is they make sure you learn real money. You know how to feel, you know where everything is, so you know how to detect, detect a fake. So I want to make sure you understand the biblical principles that you need a voice speaking word over you because the book says that they can't hear without a preacher. He can't preach unless he be sent. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Because all kind of nonsense are there um, in the marketplace right now. So you need to know what the truth is. Okay, so I'm almost where I want to be. Um, let me read this. I heard this as I was in preparation today and it came so strong. God says, look at how I interacted from all, with all of my servants in Scripture. From Adam to Noah to Abram to Moses to David to the apostles. I want you to write these five words down. Critical. God, he says to me so strong, God only speaks to us. God only speaks to us. The key word there's not us. The key word there's two words. Only speaks. God only speaks. That means if you can't hear, you have nothing left. Because he only speaks. Everyone we look at in Scripture, their only connection with God was what God said. It was what, it was what he said. Abram, God says, get up from your countrymen, this and that, and that. God says this and that. God says this. Noah, God said, God said, God said, God said. God said, Noah, go build a big, 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 big boat. And Noah went and build a boat, build a boat. The, the connection, the essence of the relationship with God and everyone we celebrate in Scripture was on the basis that God spoke to them. God speaking psalm is all we have. I don't know if this is crazy to y'all as this to me, but that thing tripped me out. I say, babe, what does that mean? So if he only speaks and I can't hear, what I got? Watch this, way. Let me show you how this jacked me up. So people who you think are so spiritual, if they can't tell you the last thing God said to them, how spiritual are they? What is it? Wait, we need to talk about this. I, I can be, wait, soldier. This thing's so real, Right? That we have hundreds, thousands of Christians all over the place who so love God and they so deep with God and this and that. And that. Okay, what, what's, what, what's God saying to you? So what is the basis of your relationship with God if you ain't hearing what he's saying? Because God only speaks. And if you can't hear, what, what's, what's this depth, this deep walk you have? Wait, this crazy. Lord, I won't do this on a Sunday morning, but I need to be able to do it just like this, like a teacher. That's why they need to come on a man's night. Because I need this to be God. We got to get this to him. If, if we can't help. 
So I said, well, God, I said, God, so I don't want to sound pompous and don't sound like we um, relegating people to somewhere on the outside. He says, no, son, the problem is most people in the body of Christ, their relationship with me is vicarious. Their relationship with me is based on somebody else's relationship with me. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? I can hold it like last week. You know, last week, it was loud. But I don't need y'all to be loud now because you don't receive this. All right, so don't get me wrong. He says, the majority of people in the body of Christ, their relationship with me is based on somebody else's relationship with me. And if that person stops hearing me, they're in trouble. Because it's a vicarious relationship. It is through someone else. What if Pastor Denzel was not hearing? Oh but it as was crazy, but what do we call ourselves? Would it be? Open book test. What? Believers. Believers. That means, that, let me tell you what I mean. Faith people. But how you get faith? So if you ain't hearing, are you really a believer? Oh, God. But do you see how fundamental this is? Like, like we skip, that's why I'm taking my time. I want, I want to make sure we get this. This is so fundamental. But we, we, we throw around, I'm a believer, I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a believer. Yes, I'm a believer. You're a believer, I'm a believer. A believer. You, we all believe. Everybody's a believer. What are you hearing, though? Because it takes faith to be a believer. And if you can't hear, what are you believing? No, okay. I know what you believe in. Who are you believing? And you say you believe in God, but you really believe in me. <laughs> I believe God. No, you believe Pastor Denzel. Jesus. And you believe what he said about God. You don't really believe God. Because you gotta don't believe God, you gotta know God. Bro, what's your name is again? What's your name again? Shad Shadwell. Yeah, I can tell you stories with Delton. He said, boy, boy, I believe Delton. No, you don't believe Delton. You don't know Delton. You know who Delton is? Ooh, ooh, ooh. See that? You call him a son. No, that's my son. Lord Jesus, no, that's my son. Yeah, that's the point right there. So that's your son, right? That's the problem right there. Because he don't know Delhi, he thinks my son. Because he, what? oh my God, I can work this to pieces. Because he look at us. Come on, come on. So you hear him talk and hear me talk, or they talk something like, they look kind of alike. Jesus. So, watch this. Let me connect the dots. And that's what church has become. We are all, we are not believers. We are dot connectors. Are dot connectors. Wow. I ain't gonna lie. Um, people, people confuse what engineers are. They think we are creative. I am not creative. Engineers are not creative. We, we, we calculate our lines. I am not creative at all. Because I remember when I when when Lou used to bias them, them Lou used to like bias them book where you trace and you connect numbers. They connect dots. Boy, I can stand up, but my my mouse look like a look, look like a cross. Cause I like I couldn't follow the dots properly. That I, and I, like it's supposed to be called it's like and you'd be like, okay, I finish. But <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I don't know. <laughs> but I, 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 didn't, I didn't draw a line to all the dots, and I know. Because, no, well, some of the, when the numbers you know, but them dots, like, she's getting things, the dots ain't numbered. Lose like them deep things. So, you know, numbers, so you just, okay, finish. What is this? A maze. <laughs> I, did, I did a picture of a maze. <laughs> That's what church has become. We connect the dots and hope we write. How are we doing? We all right? 
So we have a we have a job to do. And in this house, well, there's a faith house. There's a faith preacher. But we gotta make sure we live by faith. And living by faith, it can't stay. It begins at living with Pastor Denzel says. It, it starts there. But if I go if I gonna preach about being imitators of God, and you ain't imitating me yet. What do you mean you're imitating me? Because I just try to hear God, you should be trying to hear God too. So before we can imitate God, you gotta imitate me, and then you imitate God. So what, what you're doing is, you, you, you know, get it and bring it. Get it, get it, Pastor. Go. You know what? <laughs> a lot of us New Covenant believers are so smack in the Old Covenant. So, so God says to the, to the children of Israel, listen, I want to talk to you all. He said, no. <laughs> no. They said, God says, okay, you all come. I want to talk to you all. Let's come. Everybody, everybody, you you, you come. Come, bring your turn. Everybody, come. Come out and talk to you all. He said, no. No, 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 no. Moses. Moses, you go up there. You go. Oh, my God. God's intent was to talk to everybody. Jesus. God was going to talk to everybody. They said, no, 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 no. Are you ready for that? Moses. You go. Go tell us what he say. Go bring back word to us. That was supposed to be a game shifting movement when everybody heard God. And that's, oh my God, I've been teaching this. I got to add this to my teaching about the glory. That, that, that was the whole idea. They was going to go into glory together. When you go into glory, you don't need a preacher. When glory manifests, there's no need for a preacher. Because everybody has face to face with God himself. Glory to God. Everyone has direct contact with God. The middleman has moved out of the way. We are stuck in a state of dungroism. Exactly, Dawn, because we can't hear. Because we can not hear. And I can tell you this, that if I didn't teach this word tonight, y'all would live and go on and go to heaven. Yes, you would. And then you would get to heaven and be like, what? I could have had that. I could have had that. I could have had that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You get to heaven and realize, what? You mean all that I could have had? Don't let me tell my son another story again against Christ. You realize all... <laughs> Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain. You realize that no cancer didn't have to kill me. I could have lived past that. Boy, boy, look at me. Look at me, y'all. We could have gotten a loan for our property. And God wouldn't strike us down. We would have just been a slave to the lender. We would, I wouldn't have gone to hell. No, I, I would have just put us in toil. And, we did, and uh, oh my God, you know what happened? Once we got that loan for the property, we said, go back and get a loan for the building. And right before I retire, we have a debt burning celebration. Man, we burning our mortgage up for the church, man. I walk up in there, glory to God. <laughs> I walk up in there, my goodness. Daddy, like, stop, stop up here, daddy. Daddy, don't move. Stay right there. You know, daddy, why, why do you move? You, <laughs> daddy, you're drooling. <laughs> no. And I die and go to heaven. If we die, go to heaven. But this way, it's so much easier when you do it by faith. Yeah. All right. I know I ain't doing nothing for your emotions right now, but I hope your spirit leaping. 
this right here, y'all. Mm-mm-mm. I don't even need that no more. But that, this thing, this thing, like firing on the inside of me. Glory to God. That when you start hearing him, like I mean, I can give you some stories. Like he said, "Come to see Adrius." He told us, "Come here." I say, "No, but God, I ain't gonna come here." He said, "Come here. Come to this place." I said, "God, we spent almost fifty thousand dollars in the Wong's Plaza." I say, "Come here." I came to the school, talked to the principal. I said, "Principal." Um, I was considering, you know, I, I went to the school, you know, and I was just wondering, you know, um, whether you would be open for us having church in the auditorium. She says, man, Bishop, I know who you are. We would love to have you in the auditorium, but unfortunately, there's another church here. I said, okay, don't worry about it. And I was glad because I wanted to tell God, see there? <laughs> and I did. I go on there and say, God, you see there? I tell you. That's no bother that school thing. I, I, God, I told you that. The next day, I hear someone up front will see you. Back then, we was fine. We, we, you know, I had an office in the back. You know, I, 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 I didn't like the most plaza man. <laughs> and my nice office in the back, you know. It was all, you know, it was all right. Everything was, you know. And my goodness, man. And, and the brother say, my name is, is uh, what's his name? Pastor King. I say, okay, glory to God, God bless you. He says, we are in C.A. and we heard that you were interested I said, yeah, but I, heard, I, I said, but I heard you guys were there, and I said, we would never want to come and unseat you guys that are here. He says, tell you what, how long your churches be? I'm like, oh, no, why you want to know? I said, I told him how long it be. He said, good, we'll start in the afternoon so y'all can be there in the mornings. You don't miss when you hear God. And now here he is. Didn't be in this place. Now nah, some of y'all can cry when we leave here. Not me. Some of y'all can cry. <laughs> you know, I mean, and I, no, I can cry a little bit because we have some memories in here. Yeah. You know, some things that happen in here. But when you hear God, like things that just happen. I was recounting um, this week about Glory 93.9. When that station came to us, we had no money and we needed $37,000 to get it up on the air. And guess what? It was up on the air. How would happen? I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But it's on the end. It's still on the end now. We don't have no bunch of people buying commercials and buying ads on it. It's still on the air. It ain't never gone off. Well, it's gone off because of lightning. Like, 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 like. like. <laughs> so, I, are anybody being encouraged to hear? Like you you starting to see this. I want to say, this, Lord, I have to hear for myself. Yeah, man. I want to hear for myself. And listen, this, preachers don't, preachers will be watching, don't be afraid to preach this. This is not going to make you irrelevant. This is not going to make you relevant. You're going to be necessary because under the mouths of two or three witnesses, every word be established. And the Lord made you necessary. Because he gave some apostles and pastors. Don't, you, don't be afraid of people hearing. We don't need to be intimidated by, by the house hearing. We want you to hear. How, how you gonna live if you how you gonna live by faith if you can't hear? How, how are we gonna be a faith house? A faith church with doubting people. The devil is a liar. All right. All right. Three minutes. Let me. I wanted to get to something, uh, but I'll probably jump off. I'll jump off there next week. Um. Mm, I could end here, you know. I think we did enough to whet your appetites for where we want to go. Let's just drop three three scriptures on you, and then we can go there. We go from there. All right, so let's talk about hearing God. Um, the voice of God is only spiritually discerned. It is only 
spiritually discerned. Boy, I won't get to that thing, but no, I can do it. It is only spiritually discerned. So if your spirit man is undeveloped or underdeveloped, you're going to have major challenges in hearing God. Which means you're going to have major challenges living by faith. Parenthetically, I can get here down the road. When you appreciate that concept, then you understand why the devil has been hiding from many of us in the church the power of praying in the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says you build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So let's make sure they don't, let's, let them fight by praying in the Holy Ghost. Let them think it ain't for me, it ain't for me, it ain't for me. And they ain't going to fool praying in the Holy Ghost. And that's, that way we can keep their faith limited. Because praying in the Holy Ghost, according to 1 Corinthians 14, builds your spirit. It, it, it refreshes, it builds your spirit. God Almighty, don't preach this now. I can just throw this out here. Please forgive me for drifting. But this is so good. The Lord told me, he says, son, he says, when you pray in the Holy Ghost, encrypted messages are downloaded into your spirit. Like codes are written into your spirit. And you staying in the presence of God will cause them things to pop out and you don't know where they come from. Them codes will just get, okay, the Bible says this. When, when we speak in tongues, we speak mysteries. Encrypted messages. No time praying in the Holy Ghost is wasted. Okay, that's not the teaching for the night. So I just had to get it out. I want to see how I feel coming out. So when I deal with it again, I can nail it. All right, so God, what God says to us, Devad, it can only be discerned by our spirit. So let's just confirm this. Let's just confirm this. Um, Romans 8 and 16, Proverbs 20, 27, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, 14. Um, go to 1 Corinthians um, um, so, and I'll let um, uh, Marisha and uh, Jesse fight over Romans 8 and Proverbs 20. Y'all figure it out. Let's do, give me the screen with 1 Corinthians 2 while they find those other two. Here's what it says here. But as it is written, what does it say? I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God have prepared for them that love him. Go to verse 10. I know you have an answer verse there. Go to verse 10. Read it. Ready? But God hath revealed them, come on, by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So he says, I, air, and heart will not receive, will not understand what God communicates to us. Do you see that? You don't see it, you don't, you don't see it with your eyes, you don't hear it with your ears, and you don't feel it with your emotions. And now that I've cut out those three, I have just gave you the, what is the sum total of many of our spiritual experience? What we see, what we hear, and what we feel. If I take that out of most of our lives, we have no spirituality left. And the sad part is, all those things are carnal. But those carnal things are really the basis of our spirituality. Does that make sense? We, we say we're spiritual, but we still live based on what we see, what we hear, and what we feel. That's what we live by. But we call ourselves spiritual. I'm low. Why are you low? I just, I feel, I feel low. I learned, I learned low from Robert. From Robert. It's low, man. When she said, first of all, she said, I said, what are you talking about? Now? Jesse, you're right. No, man, I just feel low. Because if you've been low, you, you know what low is. No further explanation needed. Just, just feel low. You mad? No. 
You sad? Just feeling. Not some, who, who do anything? Ain't nobody do nothing. Ain't nobody, I ain't, ain't nobody rob me. Ain't nobody top me that I know about. I just feel. You ever wake up feeling low? Okay, y'all don't tell the truth, man. Like you just, you get, you get up, you wash your face, you just try to get it together, and you just, you just feel low. Lord Jesus, I hope y'all are feeling low right now. Lord, lift them, Lord, lift them, Lord, lift them, Lord. If they feeling low, lift them. <laughs> oh my goodness. So you don't feel this because feelings will mess you up, and you don't see this because your eyes going to lie to you. And you don't hear this because the one that we know is that God don't speak so that your ears can hear. He communicates with you by his spirit and your spirit connecting together. All right, let's go here. Um, uh, go to first, the verse I gave you, um, the next verse I gave you right here, um, Sal. I think it's 14. It's crazy. Is it 14? Yeah. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, Lord God. When you live on your eyes, your ears, and your heart, what God's saying to you sound like foolishness. That's why you were so mad a couple weeks ago. I ain't calling your name to him. Big, big, big. Because you was being natural. You was being carnal. And you actually told your mind of God, you don't hear what he got to say. You didn't tell him that, but that's what you told him. You came to this church, and you don't hear what he got to say. You came because you had to come. Because you just don't hear their mouth when you ain't come. So let me just come so I can shut them up. But I come in, and he preaching the word of faith to lift your spirit. But you can't hear it because it's not naturally discerned. And that means if you and your feelings, you're going to miss what I'm trying to say to you because what I'm saying to you is not be naturally discerned. So right on the one side, your, your pastor, I, I, told, I told people there to me this, that my days of understanding you being in your feelings are coming to an end. Why? Because I can't help you. What you mean, pastor? No, if you're in your feelings, what I, I, can't, I really can't help you. I need you to get out your feelings for me to help you. Because the words that I speak, they're spirit. My God, sir. Oh, God, why are you calling your pastor to explain how you're in your feelings? Jesus. That's a waste of you and his time. My God. And if he's speaking to your feelings, he is guilty of being derelict of duty. Because he should never be speaking to your feelings. Oh, my God. You don't need your pastor for that. There are people that can speak to your feelings for real. They exist. Some free, some you got to pay for. They don't come to York, and then you mind when you leave me. That ain't what I wanted to hear. No, because you didn't hear what I say. Because what I say cannot be, oh my God. They are foolishness unto him. Some of you tell me this. Pastor, you're making no sense. And I smile, thou art so carnal. Pastor, you make no sense. Yeah, because you're carnal. So I can never make sense to you right now. Because you're in your feelings. I have no word for you. I, 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 I won't squeeze this dry. <laughs> what I say can't do nothing for you till you get out of your feelings. So for everybody in this church now who got meetings there with me, please postpone those meetings. Until you get out, <laughs> look straight. I ain't looking at nobody's face. Look straight. I got a list of a couple of names for me and me. If you're still in your feelings, don't come to me. You can get back. Because all you say is, my pastor is talking foolishness. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. In other words, Denzel, stop trying to break it down. Because if you've ever been to Pastor Denzel, Pastor Denzel is like draw drawings and all. I used to do drawings, I used to do diagrams. This, this is what I hear in. And uh, I said, look at this. And you're looking at them, you try to show them, they're looking at you like, Jesus, you, you still ain't get it? I 
Pastor, you know, see that, what, 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 what I'm going through right now? Oh, uh, you know what? You and your feelings. He says, Denzel, they can't know what you're saying. Because what you are saying is spiritually discerned. Dead spirit, they can't hear you. This is getting so good, man. I can stop right here. Get the last two scriptures? All right. So, my God. Oh, man, let, let's save that for a little while. Let me see what But the natural man, I love it so much. The natural man. Receive it not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Who is a natural man? Besides, go back to verse 9. Make sure we understand the natural man. The one who looking, hearing, and feeling. Pastor, I ain't see it yet. That's your problem. Pastor, I've been waiting by this phone and I ain't hear nothing. That's your problem. I've been trying to get over this bound, but it still got me bored. That's your problem. Because you're still seeing, hearing, and feeling. Oh, my goodness. No, resist, resist. I, any devil is just, it's just time. I can resist. Whew, I'm going to show you all this. So we're watching again last time. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Give him the next scripture, give him the Proverbs scripture, um, whoever got it. I want you to understand how that when God, God speaks, it's only with your spirit, by your spirit, that you can hear him. Proverbs 20 and 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Watch that man, say it again. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's so powerful there because when you look at it, um, what, the, what the inference is is that God lights your candle by the Holy Spirit. See? Your spirit, your spirit is the candle. And what he does is that he puts fire. He lights that candle by the Holy Spirit. Because oh, we have time to really go into this. You have a spirit. God has, it's crazy, God is a spirit, but he has a spirit. When I say he has a spirit, that's going to the whole idea of H2O. You know, H2O is tripartite. Well, not tripartite, it can function in three dimensions. It functions in three dimensions. It's, you know what H2O is, right? H2O is. Everybody know that? Yeah, water. Right, so there's, <laughs> there's ice, there's that liquid water that you drink in, and then there's water vapor, all H2O. Anytime somebody tries to confuse you with the whole thing about the Trinity, that's it right there. Make sense? It's all H2O. It's liquid, solid, gas. Good stuff. All right, so the, the candle of... The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. I'm going to try to open that up. Get the last text I go on. Romans 8 and 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. Okay, it's very important there. The spirit itself, that should be capital S. These, some of these verses got it written wrong. The spirit itself, capital S, bears witness with our spirit, small s. Got it? So his spirit bears witness with our spirit. And there's another scripture. I get this wrong sometime. I think it is, is it 1 Corinthians 6 and 17? 1 Corinthians 6 and 20? 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. Anyway, it's something like this. They that are joined to God become one spirit. So your connection, when you're joined to God, you don't become one body with him, you become one spirit with him. Your connection to God is a spirit to spirit connection. Was it? What? What? I was right. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17. They that are joined to God become one spirit. So we have to learn then, if we're going to hear God, we're going to have to learn to build our spirits. Now, any of you interested in hearing more of this in the weeks to come? You want, you want to grow your spirit, man. I want to really walk you through this so that we can move 
from being dot connectors to faith walkers. But we literally know we heard God. We can say, I know I heard God. See, it's so crazy that Sunday, we're talking about, last Sunday, we're talking about this whole thing about prophesying. What's prophesying? It's really just hearing God. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit empowers us to prophesy. The Holy Spirit is the light on the candle. The Spirit of man which is the candle of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the light on the candle, and that allows you to prophesy. You can't prophesy if you're hearing God, because prophesying is really just releasing the mind of God. That's what it is, for, for the record. It, 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 uh, all the other things we've been doing. No, prophecy is supposed to be the mind of God. So, the prophet of God telling you, go to the go in tonight. So, what's the mind of God concerning that? When the prophet tell you, Golden State, go in tonight. You know Golden State and Boston oh, playing? Golden State. Golden State. Yeah. The Warriors go in tonight. I hear by the Spirit of God, the Warriors go in tonight. And why? And why would the Holy Spirit have you to announce that the Warriors can win tonight? Don't make me go down this road. I don't want to go down. Because your Bible tells you what prophecy is for. And none is predicting scores of game. Let me say this while I hear. All these supposed to prophesy and all these things that have no spiritual connotation, no spiritual connection, no ability to the body of Christ. Wherever you go in together from, stop going there. Because God is not random. When God speaks it with purpose, it's to his end. So you showing off that you could prophesy, that's carnal, and you walk you're right next door to witchcraft if you're in the head. Close bracket. I'm excited about this teaching. I hope you are too. Let's give God praise for what we heard tonight. Come on. Mm-hmm.